प्लीज गेट रेडी फॉर ए डिक्टेशन ऑफ ट्रांसक्रिप्शन नंबर 100 फ्रॉम सर कैलाश चंद्र मैगजीन फाइव सेकेंड्स start sir it is usual in all parliamentary systems of government for the president at the opening of a session to address both houses of parliament it has been criticized as being merely a narration of facts which have happened during the past year but that is the usual thing as honorable members know which happens in most of the parliaments which work under parliamentary systems of government i am sure that the honorable members are aware that india has always stood for peace and ever since her independence has done what she could to preserve peace in the world both in korea and in indochina our efforts led to a ceasefire and for the first time with the settlement of the indo china problem there was no shooting war anywhere in the world but now again there are war clouds especially in the far east as has been emphasized by the prime minister time and again patience and tolerance are necessary to solve the tangle in formosa our government have recognized the chinese people's republic as the government of china and have recognized the chinese claim to the caro declaration if the caro declaration is to have any value then it is fairly certain that formosa is part of china but at the same time one cannot forget the fact that things have got to be tackled patiently if this problem of formosa is to be solved in a peaceful manner that will take time and it is towards that end i am sure that our prime minister is working so that there will be no clash in the far east with regard to the question of formosa this has been prominently mentioned in the address of the president we hope that patience will be exercised by both the the sides to solve this question and there will be no incident which might lead to serious consequences our agreement with china on tibet which formed the basis of the joint statement by china's and our prime ministers regarding panch shila must form the main principle through which international tension can be eased and finally peace established i am glad sir that recently the king of laos has accepted the idea of the five principles put forward in this declaration it is usual in the present time of atomic age to talk about the dangers of the use of atom for war like purposes the question is whether the new instrument in the hands of men is going to be used for the benefit of humanity or for the destruction of humanity and human civilization
as we know it today. Both the United States and the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics possess atomic weapons and the United Kingdom government has now planned to manufacture hydrogen bombs for their security. As the Prime Minister has pointed out, time and again, our country is not interested in the production of atomic weapons, but we are immensely interested in the use of atomic energy for peaceful purposes. There is no doubt, whatever, that in the interests of human civilization, these weapons should not only be banned, but destroyed. The question is, who is going to take the risk? There have been appeals that as the USA was the first nation to manufacture these dangerous weapons and use them, therefore, they should set an example by destroying the bombs in their possession. Stockpiling of atomic weapons would lead to a dangerous situation and somebody, therefore, ought to make a start in the matter of the destruction of these weapons. If moral standards are to be the guiding factor, it will be a great help to humanity. If the step can be taken, if only there is courage to do so, the USSR will have to follow suit. But unfortunately, there is the fear complex. Most nations want to protect themselves and want to guard themselves against any surprise attacks by the other side. So the armaments race goes on. They forget that this mentality will eventually lead to war. They think that negotiations can take place only when one can speak from strength, but they forget that two can play at this game. So long as this view is held, the armament race will go on and tension must certainly increase. The conference which meets in London in a few days time on disarmament, I hope will find a solution. The complete banning of nuclear weapons must be the first step that any conference should strive at and I hope that under proper international supervision, this step will be taken. But connected with this is the question of the reduction of conventional armaments. There must be a realistic approach to this problem.